courtesy of the Vikings Entertainment Network. Welcome back to Cleveland Brown Stadium. Vikings lead 20 to 7. And Harrison Smith, Harry the Hitman, mic'd up for the uh, third quarter. There he is chatting with uh, Nick Muse. Harrison, thanks a lot for uh, helping us. How about that uh, interception return by, I'll call him Dwight McLaughlin. You can take it from there. Yeah, we call him Nudie. He's, uh, he's, <laughs> he's a ball player. He's just... He's always making plays. He's been been doing it since we started camp, so there's no surprise to that one. Right. I need him getting in the end zone now. Yeah, his um, his nickname indeed is Nudie, and uh, it was Tyler Huntley who was undressed on that throw. And I, I, I was I was hoping McLaughlin would get into the end zone, man. But um, how are things? How are things down there? Like when you watch a game from this vantage point, how do you watch it when it comes to uh, the secondary and just the totality of the defense? It's good. Normally, uh, if I'm not mic'd up with you, I've got a, a defensive headset on, so I'm getting a call and looking at the secondary and the front and just trying to pretend I'm out there, see what guys are doing. All right. Quick hitter to the right, gain of five, uh, five or six. It'll be uh, second and about four for the Cleveland Browns. Pete? Uh, we, t we talked a lot about Jay Ward and, and his ability to play both safety and corner. And in this day and age, in this league, Harrison, it's a very rare thing to do. So talk about his skill set and his ability to do both and what it takes for someone to be able to do both. Yeah, he, he played a lot of corner at LSU and uh, flashed on special teams big time last year. So when you're flashing on special teams and making, making those tackles, they tend to be a little harder than than even on defense sometimes. So you got to find a spot for a guy like that. And be, kind of the more you can do. Harrison, in, in chatting with Brian Flores yesterday and Theo Jackson, and we've heard it a million times, when they all say, like, you're you're a coach on the field or a coach in the room to these guys, I ain't trying to make you sound old or anything, but, like, what goes into that, uh, uh, trying to raise these younger players and get them better quickly? Lucky Jack! Uh, I'm in the way right now. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just, it, it, it kind of, ooh, ooh. ooh. Lewis seems playing angry. <laughs> flag. It might have been yeah. before the hit, though. Yeah, the flag came out before the hit. Yeah. So they're gonna have a they're gonna have a little discussion. Um. Yeah, being the I don't like saying the old guy, but being the veteran in the room, right. you know, it kind of comes with the territory, and it's uh, it's a role I've always, I've always I've always enjoyed the mental side of the game, anyways. And however I can pass on the experience and knowledge I have, I try to. I, I don't try to be like overbearing and overdo it, but um, guys have questions, they come to me, or if I see something, um, you know, I'll, I'll let them know. But it's. I don't like to overstep, you know, Durante and uh, Flo and everybody. Like, but if I see something, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll try to help out where I can. But uh, that was holding on Jordan uh, Kanashik, who just got here go. like a few days ago, six year from Cal, and he spent his last two years with Cleveland. No gain on that play, and uh, it will be second down for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, ben Lieber, the Vikings lead 20 to seven. What do you have for the Hitman? Thank you. Well, yeah, I mean, look, let's, we got to talk about the guy that just keeps making plays on defense right now. You know, a lot of fans been wanting to see Lewis Seen sort of show up. We all understand the injury situation, but, you know, he gets a tip ball interception. You know, he didn't maybe do anything super special, but it shows up on the stat list. And I tell you what, that huge hit that he just had, I mean, I'm not saying that this is going to be the game that propels him to X, Y, and Z, but, you know, I know that you've been there in those situations before where there's sometimes it's just a spark that, like, gets you to take another step and hit another gear. Do you think this game is the type of game that Lewisine absolutely has to have? Is that for me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, this is, uh, you know, Lou came in you know, with the reputation of a big hitter, and like you said, you know, had, some, had some bad luck there over in London. Uh, so being able to bounce back, get his hands on the ball, you know, even though you say that's not, like, spectacular play, like, you catch someone thrown to you, that's a big deal, especially in the red zone. Before the half, you know, that's points. Uh, and then getting a big hit like that, like, kind of setting the tone. It should do, should do a lot for his confidence. Get him. Ben Huntley nearly sacked. Runs out to the right and uh, eludes an on-charging Jay Ward. 
for a gain of seven and a first down. Jay Warren Harrison, I mean, safety, doing good work on special teams, moves to corner. He played both at LSU. But it, how difficult is it learning everything in Flores defense, like as a safety, and then all of a sudden you're playing corner? Uh, kind of like we mentioned with my, my veteran status, uh, <laughs> some things that I don't think are as hard, you know, right. if you don't have the experience and stuff, they can be harder. Uh, we, in our secondary, a lot of things are interchangeable between safety and corner and just all our pieces. So he has a, he has a good understanding of where he fits at both spots. Now, Harrison, we'll talk, let's talk a little bit about the evolution of your game. And I have a question. And the only reason why I'm asking it is because I think the answer might be different than what I expected. If you had the choice between a sack and an interception, which one would you take? Is it a sack fumble? Or is it a <laughs> well, it can be, be a sack force fumble if you want it to be. Um, now, there's something about interceptions, especially in the secondary, like it's just the act of stealing. Um, <laughs> it feels good on the football field. So you get a, you get a pretty big rush with those. Um, but sacks, especially if you can get the ball out, you know, they can be just as big. So they both do a lot for the team. But picks are, picks are a little harder to come by normally. Well, it, it is fair to mention that into the regular season, Harrison is a half sack from 20 in his career, joining the 20 sack 30 interception club, becoming only the seventh in NFL history to do so. I mean, we got some HOFs on that list, man. Charles Woodson, Brian Dawkins, Larry Wilson, Ray Lewis, Jack Ham, and uh, Nick Bonacani. So, um, Getting a half sack this year would be really cool for Harrison Smith with 5.19 to go in the third quarter. Huntley nearly threw another interception. Bounces off the hands of a Viking into the awaiting arms of Jalen Darden. And Darden's able to secure a first down. 16 gets 16. And trailing by 13, the Browns think they're in business. Ben Lieber, uh, what do you have up your sleeve for Harrison? Well, I mean... Uh about just uh, what this defense is going through right now. I mean, I know that you faced a lot of a lot of scrambling dual threat quarterbacks. We don't probably see as much of them here in the NFL, but these guys, are, our defense has their hands full. Like, what's it like when you go against a guy like Huntley that can that can throw the ball down the field and he can scramble a little bit? Yeah, it just adds one more one more element you gotta yeah. take into account, especially when you're calling plays on. Like, I think that was third and medium ish. Um, so if you're, I don't know what coverage you're in, but if, you know if you're playing man and he eludes the pass rush, there's really nobody else looking at him. Uh, so that can create some issues against guys like this. Preseason, you normally don't have quite as big of a plan, so you're just kind of playing baseball and, and just just trying to play and, and and show what you can do fundamentally. Inside linebackers coach Mike Sarabo is calling the defense this half. Your position coach Durante Jones called it in the first. Phillips is calling offense uh, the entire game. Uh, as we uh, have a flag here, my man went on the pole a little too early, so this will be uh, an infraction against Cleveland. I don't know, man. I think it's really cool that uh, O'Connell, uh, with the gesture of letting other people call the game, likewise for Brian Flores, um, I think that's pretty cool, man. What do you think of it? Yeah, I think that's that's something you should definitely do in the preseason. I know I've seen on like hard knocks and stuff that let players call it, so I'm still waiting on that opportunity. <laughs> but uh, now it's good because I mean, like I've seen some wild stuff happen during the season. So just getting getting reps for different coaches. It's just like players really you want to get get a chance to expand. Your, there we go. Kind of expand your repertoire. Foreman with a short game. It's third down for the Browns, third and 12. Uh, Harrison, you being, being having been a Viking for as long as you have, you've played in a lot of different styles of defenses. And I don't know if there are more, two that are more opposite each other than a Mike Zimmer type offense where you had the, the discipline for defensive linemen do mm -hmm. your thing. And then now with what you're doing with Brian Flores, Talk about Flores and what do you love about uh, you know the defense that you're playing right now? Because I'm sure that's part of what kept you around for another year. I, uh, I mean, you kind of nailed it with that. Uh, some of the defenses I've played in are very, uh, very like gap sound, matchy on, on you know, kind of mannish coverage. Um, and and we do some of that, but we also play a little bit more. I don't know, maybe unconventional is how you call it. Uh, but it's it's very like 
very in the player's hands, like within the scheme that, that Flo has built. And it, it, it kind of gives you a few more tools you can use if you know what you're doing and get some more vision on the ball, um, which which is a lot of fun. You can get, like last year we had a lot more forced fumbles. We need to create some more interceptions. Um, but being able to get that many guys to the ball when it comes out is kind Cade of the York, idea. Cade York from 34, and he nailed it. More with Harrison Smith, Harry the Hitman, mic'd up on the sideline. When we return, the Vikings lead the Browns 20 to 10, and this is Minnesota Vikings football. Cleveland Brown Stadium on the Vikings Entertainment Network. Thank you for watching on Fox 9. Thank you for listening via FM 100.3, KFAN, and the Vikings Radio Network. Harrison Smith mic'd up on the sideline as his Vikings lead 20 to 10. Are, are your kids, Eleanor and Pierce, watching right now? Um, they probably are. I don't know if Pierce is paying too much attention. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Daddy. Eleanor is pretty, uh, she's interested in football. Every time it comes on, she says, Dada. Yeah. Pretty much any sport that comes on. Yeah, so, so how would you explain to Eleanor or anybody in your covenant who loves football this new kickoff, this new kickoff rule? Um, what do you think of it? I, don't, I, I sold out, huh? <laughs> Well, at least you're getting paid a lot for it. <laughs> uh, go, I honestly completely forgot about it until we started uh, training camp. So it threw me off when we started practicing it. Right. But I think it's good. I think it's good for the game. Like, make it more watchable. Make it a little, you know, as, as safe as they can make it with it still being football and entertaining. Because um, it kind of, you know, the past couple of years, it kind of became something you change the channel before or something. So... Hall, who, who threw a touchdown pass to Malik Knowles, hands off Gaskin up the middle for three, and it'll be second and seven. Uh, so Harrison, right next to the hotel that we've been staying in for the last, seems like a month, there's an airport. Now I'm wondering if you just at some point thought about maybe sneaking on over there, taking the wheel chocks off a of beach craft, and then just <laughs> taking that thing up, because you do have your pilot's license. I know a lot of people don't know that. But aviation, that's a big part of, like, at least it has been a big part of who you are. What are these other things outside of football that you love to do? Uh, so that's something I got into a while ago. And like you mentioned, I had uh, some good runs on a beach craft. And then, uh, Love of golf, it's uh, it's just too much, too much to be safe up there. So uh, I put that one on the back burner. But I did walk down to the pier right there and stand right uh, kind of <laughs> under where planes are coming in, mm. and saw some 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 cool single engines fly right overhead. That was that was pretty cool. I was just standing by the water and enjoying that. Paul, shotgun. Runs out to the right, eyeballs Gaskin, finds him, and he stumbles his way close to a first down. In fact, uh, it's going to be a connection there of about six, seven yards. Ben, uh, the third quarter's nearly over. Um, what do you got for Harrison? Uh, it's so sad that we're going to let Harrison go here pretty soon. I did want to ask you about your head coach. I mean, it seems like you guys have, you know, probably a, a little different, a more uh, a deeper bond than maybe just veteran player and head coach. How would you describe your relationship with your head coach, who's almost like your mentor? You guys are almost the same age. Yeah, we're. Uh, I, I kind of joke sometimes. I'm, I'm closer to his age and most of the coaches than, than my own teammates. So there's some, you know, some things in life we, we tend to talk about and, and share and more on the human side. But I love talking ball and I love talking to an offensive guy like, like KO who every time we go against him in practice, stuff dialed up so just kind of just kind of hearing how he thinks about the game and certain situations right. and whatnot is uh, you know, uh that, Dart, like, that's interesting to me darden tried to get speedy on the right side but was stopped we pause our final um uh, uh, the end of the conversation with harrison smith around the corner on the minnesota vikings entertainment network
2010 Vikings late in the third quarter from Cleveland on the Vikings Entertainment Network. Uh, Harrison, uh, in closing, three things. Uh, thank you very much for doing this. Secondly, too bad for J.J. McCarthy, whether he would have played this season or not. Seriously, what a wonderful kid. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know if you've chatted with him, but, uh, like, what do you say to him? Uh, I haven't seen him since the surgery and everything. I, uh, I shot him a text. His, uh, his locker is, is pretty close to mine. In between, uh, just on the other side of Jets, so we, uh, I've gotten to know him pretty well. He's a, like you mentioned, he's like a, he's a fantastic young man, and uh, he's got a bright future ahead of him. He's trying to keep his head up, which I know he will. He's, he's uh, I think he's, he's kind of wise beyond his years, and he's got that, got that fire in him. So uh, hopefully he'll be back, back ready to go. You're fantastic, man. Can't wait to watch you against the New York Giants. Thank you very much for doing this, and uh, we'll see you on the flight back, okay? All right. Thank you all. Thanks, buddy. That's uh, Harry the Hitman.